I'm here with show jumping expert, and I would say after yesterday, cross country expert, Marilyn Little Meredith. Um, Marilyn is kindly going to give us a quick preview of the course as all the riders are walking it. Uh, so Marilyn, thank you, and just tell us, walk us through the course. All right, uh, it's a great course. Richard Jeffries is a fantastic show jumping course designer. Uh, he's known for the technicality of his courses and pushing the horses and the riders away from their comfort zone in terms of their canter, momentum, balance. So his course has a lot of changes of balance, a lot of changes of momentum that he's asking you to get to in order to execute the course the correct way. Um, the first jump, uh, one of the things that strikes me about that is that the approach is quite far away. Uh, if you're coming off your right lead, which is certainly the most appealing, it's a long way, it gets a little bit strung out, and then there's a lot going on at the bottom of that jump so that they really can disregard the rails at the top, especially if they're a little awestruck still by coming in here with the atmosphere and whatnot. Right. Uh, be, you'll see a lot of front rubs at the, at the front rail there. After that, it's seven strides to number two. It's, an, it's a much more inviting second jump than it is at the first jump. The seven strides is easy to misread though. You could get up there quite early. I think you'll see a lot of riders you know, coming a little bit to the first one and then cruising on up there and then getting a little deeper than they'd like at the second jump. Luckily, the front rail isn't too square. It's not too square of an oxygen. There's a bit of a ramp, so it's reasonably forgiving. But then, by the time you get to the third, it's quite significantly more square, quite, quite a bit more challenging. Um, it's a bit more of a scope test. And it's, the placement is such that it's far enough away that it forces the riders, or asks the riders to rush it and to, to hurry on over there and, and get strung out on the way. And then it requires a very careful horse. So it's just far enough away for that, but um, not close enough to really let you disregard having to, to having to hurry up for the, for the time allowed. Right. Uh, it's a seven stride to the next vertical. It's quite a steady, steady seven. You'll see some that would probably love to go in six, might even end up going in six. But I think that the bending seven is definitely definitely preferable. Okay. And then we get to my favorite part of the course, the rollback around the Rolex clock, the triple bar. That turn, the left turn around the Rolex clock is tricky because if you want to turn too early and you might see, you'll see some back, uh, some, some of the, uh, the, the back legs hitting that vertical prior with people tend to turn in the air, the horses want to drop their hind end. So you'll probably see that a bit. Right. And then that turn obviously slows you down. He's placed the triple bar there asking you to ride forward and the back rail will catch the riders that failed to ride forward through that through that turn. Okay. As you come down to the next, uh, the, I guess it's the 6AB, yep. the starting or the racetrack double, it's a double of verticals. He walks a little steady. Uh, it's far enough away that again he's asking, you know, he's, he's wanting to make sure that the riders that are moving along for the time, can they slow down, rebalance and be smooth enough so that they don't distract their horses going into the double verticals. That's the biggest, the biggest deal is that they're not too busy at the end and the last few strides before those double verticals. You want to have to be smooth, let your horse really balloon through there, take its time, not be thinking about the time allowed. The way the horses jump that will really change, it'll alter the four for every horse. Getting to the next jump, number seven, the Liverpool, it's four strides, but I, th I think that you'll see that riding quite differently for everybody. Okay. The danger is, is if it rides perfectly for you, the four is almost too nice. It's just so out of rhythm. It's so lovely. It would be easy to just get lulled along and think, thinking, this is wonderful. Right. And then, oops, the horse looks down at the Liverpool at the last moment, <laughs> punches out the front rail, or, um, or right. even just gets a little bit casual at that moment. Okay. Then you've got one of your first options, probably the only option on the course is from seven to eight. You can either go inside or around of number one. I don't think there'll be many inside options. I am probably going to take the inside option just because I think that turn will help engage my horse a bit through the turn. Okay. But it's something that you need to do quite carefully. You don't want to be on the angle at all at the, at the Churchill Downs jump because it no, number one, it makes it hard to get that vertical jump clear, and number two, it really sets you on a funny angle going into 9ABC, which is the Citation, Whirl Away, Calumet Farm, Triple Combination. You're going to be very straight coming into 9ABC, not on the angle. Okay. It's oxer oxer vertical, so he gives you a pretty good shot to recover if you don't get the best shot coming in, uh, in the two strides. He walks a little bit tight, probably 35 feet, a normal two strides would be 36. And then coming out, I, I'd say my best guess would be about 26 and a half feet coming out. So that's a bit of a long one. It'll ride differently for people based on their shot that they get in at 9A. The next jump, number eight, the FEI vertical at the end is very airy, very careful. 
to the end of the course, a lot of things have happened to the horses, and sometimes you're going to see people trying to rush a little, trying to make up some time if they've been lagging a bit along. And that is, that's a tricky place to do it. You want to get over there, uh, make up a little time, get it, but by the time you're alongside that Rolex clock, you want to be pretty well balanced and smooth so that the approach should feel a bit like the approach coming into the double verticals with that balancing balloony right. canter where the horses come up with their wither and really take their time off the ground. Then they can press on a little bit and make up a little more time where they get over there to the wine barrels. That's a good place to do it. You'd like to hope that they're not going to cut in on the turn, that neither the riders take too much of an inside track and they don't let the horses drop their inside shoulder. That front rail is quite strong there at, that, at the barrel jump. And again, you've had a lot, a lot of things happen. I, I hope that people set up early enough for that and get their horses in such a way that they can really bring them home clean down that last line. Right. If you jump the oxer the way you'd like with enough momentum to take care of that back pole, the five strides to the Rolex vertical should be should be a putting it together type feeling. It, it, the more forward they catch those barrels, the steadier that five is going to be. Uh, I, I hope that I'm just gradually on the decrease, bringing the hind end underneath of them, bringing the withers up in the front, supporting her, and that the that she's just gonna take her time over the Rolex in five. And then you've got an option. You'll see some of them coming home to the last jump to the water wheel in seven. Some coming in eight, not many coming in eight. The seven will should be aided by the fact that you're coming towards the in-gate. The horses are in a hurry to get home. The in-gate is drawing them. Riders are getting excited. He was a little cruel in, in that he put the front pole right up there. It is deadly square. So if you're <laughs> rushing it, you're gonna pay, you're gonna pay the penalty. If you're doing seven, then the back rail will be taken care of for you by your choice of, of number, but then the front rail really becomes your issue. For those that want to take an extra moment and quickly put the horse together in eight, you got to make sure that you do it early enough down that line that you're coming forward again for the back rail, but the eight will have, will have balanced your horse well enough that you won't have to be as concerned about the front rail. Great. Well, Marilyn, thank you so much. That was really awesome. That is and in theory. In front of you, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, no and uh, good luck today, and thanks again.